Hey everybody, it's That Sunday School Girl of ThatSundaySchoolGirl.com. Welcome to the lesson for this Sunday, July 24th. I hope that you had an amazing week. I am in what I'm referring to as my power down mode. Uh, I entered after the convention was over about a week and a half ago and I typically ride out the rest of the month of July just because it's my birthday month and I sort of feel like I deserve to do things that make me happy. So that doesn't mean that I do absolutely nothing, but it means I do a whole lot of saying a word that I am not always good with, which is no. Can you? No. Do you think you can? Mm, no. Mm, it's not a good time. Not right now. So anything that I'm doing for the next you know, week or so, especially in the next week, I mean, if you thought I said no last week, next week has a special no anointing on it uh, just leading up again to my birthday. So I'm excited uh, about the time that I've had down just to sort of reflect and enjoy myself and do things that make me happy. So um, this week that's involved a few things. And as a matter of fact, I'm actually in Chicago right now. So I'm a little bit late today with the video. Forgive me because I've been shopping, walking, talking, eating, enjoying friends. And as a matter of fact, they're having dinner now while I get the video done. And I told them that I'll be back to finish enjoying the evening as soon as we finish talking about Romans chapter five. So I didn't want to forget us because, you know, this is important to me and it's not um, I don't take this lightly to spend this time with you. So I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you have something amazing planned for this weekend. And here comes the shameless plug. You know, you already know that I want you to include Sunday school in your weekend plans. I'll say again, I used to say this often, but I know that for some of you, this video is more than you've ever done. And I'm so glad that you're here. And there are others of you who could push just a little bit more and get into class. And so I want to encourage you to do that. If you're new around here, welcome. You have just joined the largest cyber community of Sunday school students on the World Wide Web. And I pray that you'll be blessed here. I want everyone to know that ThatSundaySchoolGirl.com is not just a video that comes up on Friday afternoons, although 15 minutes with me is just enough to make you dangerous in class, but we attempt to share with you valued resources that are designed to help you grow your Sunday school ministry. So whether you are a superintendent, a Christian education leader, a teacher, or a student who wants to be a part of driving growth and change in your class, I am hopeful that you will find something on the site that will be a blessing to you and that you'll share it with someone. Since you're watching this video, I want you to do me a favor and make sure that you click that subscribe button so that you never miss any of the great resources that are shared as they become available here on YouTube. There is a new feature that I want to point out on the website. Many people have inboxed me or messaged me and asked how they can be a part of this ministry and helping to ensure its continued success. I will be the first to tell you that I am a full-time student, I am not independently wealthy, and everything that I have done to date has been part of a faith journey as God gives me things and shows me what to do. I say, God, you want me to do that? And he'll say yes, and I just launch out there and do it, and I trust him every step of the way, and he has not failed me yet. But for those who may be interested in even sharing your weekly Sunday school offering with us, especially if you're kind of cheating, like... I know a couple of you who have been honest and said, I don't go to class and you are my teacher. Well, you can give an hour class offering. And so there is a donate button that now appears on the home page and also appears on the know it page. And any amount is helpful. Uh, I'm really not good at asking for assistance. And so this is uh, somewhat stepping outside of my comfort zone. But I appreciate every gesture that has been extended because I know that this is a little bit different and I know um, that what God shows me, he is absolutely blessing. So thank you to those who will be a part of that. The button is not going anywhere. So each week, just as you would in your regular Sunday school class, I invite you to share Sunday school offering with TSSG. While you're on the site, go ahead and click the store because all of the new merchandise from this summer is uploaded in the store. So all of the new t-shirts are there. If you are interested in the TSSG box, which I talked about on last week's video. And actually next week, I think I'll put up some additional information just to share more about what a subscription box is. But if you are a teacher and would like to experience it, or maybe you're a student or a Christian education leader or superintendent who wants to be a blessing and an encouragement to a teacher, it's a great way to do it. It's fun. And those boxes will begin shipping on August 1st. 
the journals as well for the month of August will begin shipping on next week. So uh, this week coming up is our last week in our July journals. There is a fifth Sunday in July. And so they will ship next week. And then the following Monday, which should be like August the 1st, is when obviously the new journal starts. So don't forget to check out the store. There's a lot of great things, including the straight out of Sunday school t-shirt. It's all there on the store. So you want to check it out and share it with someone. Let's talk about the lesson for this week. I am using my app this week to share the lesson with you. Have you downloaded the That Sunday School Girl app from your iTunes or Google Play Store? You should do that. Depending on your publisher, our lesson title is Unwavering Faith or Not Without Hope. Our Bible basis, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. The Bible truth, there is faith in Christ with the presence of the Holy Spirit. God has given reconciliation and hope. Our memory verse is verse 5. And the lesson aim is that we will know Paul's encouraging words about peace, endurance, character, hope, and love as gifts God gave through the death of Jesus. Feel that God's provision of the Savior is his continuing commitment to his creation and take hope through Jesus Christ into difficult times in life. Welcome back to Romans. And you know that we have 11 weeks in total in Romans and we are still following the writing of Paul who at the time of the writing is in Corinth and he had intentions to visit Rome on one of his upcoming journeys. Now, Paul had an excellent reputation. Everyone thought highly of him. And so he could easily obtain the ear of people and the confidence of people with what he wrote to share with them. He had an audience with them. And he writes this letter to talk about the doctrine of grace. And he tells the reader, everything that we need to know about salvation by grace. How do we obtain salvation? How can we be confident in that salvation? How can we share that with others? And so Paul is very systematic. I mentioned last week that uh, I've heard that law schools actually use this book because Paul lays out an argument so logically, and then he draws conclusions based on the arguments that he's made. And here in this week's lesson, it's an excellent segue where it starts with the word therefore, because Paul is able to draw conclusions based on the foundation that has been laid. Up until this point, even if the reader does not read another word, like even if we cut off that last week's lesson, we know for certain that all of us have sinned. We've all come short of God's glory, that God is not moved by our ancestry or who we are or any combination of things that we have done. There is nothing that we can do to obtain salvation, that none of us is saved by our works and that man is born, man himself has a sinful nature and is in need of help. And in last week's lesson, we saw the statement, but now, like after laying all this foundation, now God had made provisions for man to be saved by grace through faith. How through the atoning death of Jesus Christ on the cross where God gave his best gift, his son, and his son gave his life as a ransom, a uh, payment for our sin. And through his sacrifice, our sin debt is paid and we are justified. We saw that word in last week's lesson. And what does justified mean? It means to be treated just as if I had never sinned. And so Paul continues to write in chapter four, and he even references, he speaks to the Jews in language uh, that they are familiar with. So last week we talked about the fact that he used Old Testament reference, and he even speaks of Abraham, Father Abraham, of whom the Jews were very proud. And Abraham was called a friend of God. But Paul speaks about Abraham and the fact that if he had just been another good man who did good things, and he would have saved himself and had bragging rights, but it was Abraham's faith. It was the fact that he believed God. The scripture says that it was counted to him as righteousness. And so he was righteous even before the law was given. He was righteous even before circumcision. He was righteous because of his faith. And so this week we talk about the hope that we have as believers that in this, um, the salvation that we receive, that inside of it is a hope that we receive because of 
the faith that we have and the grace that we have received through Christ Jesus. There is a joy in knowing that there is nothing left to pay. I know that we talk a lot about, you know, uh, debts being canceled and what that feels like, you know, when you and your mind believe that you still have something that you need to satisfy. And then you find out that it has been wiped clean. There is nothing else that you need to do. Student loans, bank loans, car loans, mortgages. And the same is as it relates to the work of Christ on the cross. Our debt was paid and there is nothing more that needs to be done. Jesus Christ paid that debt with his life. And as a result, our account got full credit. And so chapter four ends by talking about our justification. And here we are in chapter five. Again, starting with the word therefore. What is therefore? It basically starts to tell us the so what of the conversation. After all of this foundation has been laid, what is the so what of this argument that Paul has been making? And this week we see the so what is the blessing that comes as a result of this justification. Even when God saves us, he does it not for us to boast or to brag. It does not make us wonderful. We must remember that we had no part in saving ourselves. But this justification comes and it comes and there should be something that is different as a result of relationship with Christ Jesus. This week, you should take some time and actually mark up your book. So I'm going to share some of my marked notes with you before I even get to kind of talking about what the lesson means or even my key learnings. There is a lot of repetition in this week's passage. Take out your pen and actually underline these words. Look for the phrase, having been justified. What does that mean? It means being declared righteous. Look for the phrase, having been reconciled. In other words, being put back into right relationship with God. And what is this hope that we're talking about? It talks about the security that we have in Christ Jesus. There's security uh, from the things of our past, secure in our present, and even being secure in our future. Having been justified, we have, we shall have. Having been reconciled, we have or we shall have, or I have. So look for all of that type of language and repetition. Having happened in the past, these are things that have happened. This justification has happened. It's in the past. And now this lesson talks about having received that justification, what now happens as a result of it. And as a result of it, there are things that we have, things that we are experiencing because of this justification. Remember again, that we cannot satisfy sin debt on our own. It is salvation that we experience through Christ Jesus. And it's not, um, there are no things that we can do even after experiencing salvation to gain any more of God's approval or to keep his approval. Um, there's nothing that we have to do to keep his love. Also note, in fact, circle it or make uh, marks at the number of times that you see words like we, an hour. As a matter of fact, in the first five verses, you'll see those words mentioned seven times. So the writing of Paul is very inclusive. He's not lording himself over people as being someone who has perfected his walk, but he puts himself on the same level to say that we're all in this place and we're all actively doing something at every stage in our lives to make sure that we're mindful of that. And so Remember again that he's also talking to Jews and to Gentiles, but for those Jews who thought that, you know, it was a finger pointing thing at someone else, no, the language is very clear. And again, he himself does not elevate himself above those to whom he ministered. You'll also see uh, God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. So you'll see the presence of the Trinity in his writings. More words that are repeated. Look for the words faith. Faith is repeated twice. Rejoicing in glory twice. Hope three times. Grace. Chapter five is um, in the Bible, the place where the word grace is mentioned more than any other passage of scripture in the Bible. And why is that? Because again, Paul is driving home this point that grace is a gift from God. It is nothing that we uh, deserve. And that's kind of interesting because we live in a society that um, 
walks in a lot of entitlement. Like we just feel like we should have or we should receive just because, you know, we are honestly rearing a generation of children who uh, always feel like they should be winners. Everyone gets a trophy just because you showed up. And so we're breeding in a sense in our society, this entitlement, but that's what Paul is actually arguing against. No, it's not, we're not entitled to it. He doesn't owe us this, but it is a gift that God gives to us freely. It's nothing that we deserve. It's nothing that we earn, but it is his gift. And so as a result of this justification, we stand in grace. What does it mean to stand in grace? It means that we've come into favor with God because of his grace, that we have peace and security for today. And it's, we have it forever because of the grace that we have with God and our quality of life is different. Your quality of life as a child of God, I promise you, is so much different than it was on the other side. It doesn't mean, in fact, the lesson deals with this. It doesn't mean that our lives turn perfect or that suddenly when we receive grace that we are um, excluded from the trials of life, but it means that we have a different way that we approach it. The first thing that we have is that we have peace. And again, we live in a difficult time. We live in an imperfect world. Uh, there are so many challenges in our society, in our government, you know, crime ridden cities and just surrounded by trials, just, you know, every day trying to figure out how we'll make our own ends meet. And we have these ideas of what it means to have peace or the absence of confusion, the ability to sleep at night without worry, you know, inner peace, you know, Zen, relaxing states. We go on vacation. We look for sand, sun and palm trees. But that's not the type of peace that Paul is speaking of. He is specifically referring to peace with God, meaning no longer having the concern of facing condemnation as a sinner, not having your past held against you as a sinner, but being declared righteous. So in other words, having peace with God, that's the first thing we have is we have peace, which takes care of our past. The next thing we have is access to God. And remember that in the experience of the Jews, they knew um, experiencing God once a year and relied on a priest to go before God, into God's presence and to go on their behalf and to make sacrifice for them. But here, Paul says that we now have access to God for ourselves. And again, this access is a gift that's given through his grace. Nothing we've earned, nothing we deserve. And in our everyday lives, we have access to God and that's very present. So that addresses our present. The next thing we have is hope and glory in God. In other words, we have the hope of a glorious future, which addresses our future. I said before that all of this means that because of all of these gifts that we have, it means that we face our own um, lives, our challenges, a little bit differently. Now, life is going to develop you. It doesn't mean because you're a Christian that you escape every difficulty of life. And we've heard it said before that you never know what's in a tea bag until you put it in hot water. And that's how our lives are. We can say all day that we've received grace and that we walk, you know, as children of God. But there are times that will challenge that in us. It will challenge what we know to be true, what we know to be right. And that's what Paul speaks to. He says that we're going to face difficulty, but everything that we come up against is designed to, and you can look for this repetition uh, in the passage as well. It's supposed to produce something. So tribulation or suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, although you don't see the word produces, but you can insert it there, produces character and character is what produces hope. And so it is our experience uh, that brings that out of us and we are to live differently because of the love of Christ that is within us. Verses six through eight tells us that while we were sinners, and this passage always humbles me in such a way that God did not wait for you to get it right. He did not wait for me to get it right because we'll never be perfect people. But while we were still in a state that was separate for him, Christ died for us, that he gave his very life for us. And you know what? We don't generally walk around, uh, most of us saying that we would give our lives for people. You know, we have those who serve um, in our armed forces who make that commitment to our country. But as a whole, walking up and down the street, we don't typically just offer to give our lives for another person. But while we were sinners, without the promise of knowing that we would love him back, 
or accept him or come into alignment with him. That was a risk that God took for us out of his sheer love and that Christ died for us. And because of that, we have grace, we have hope, we have a future. Look at how God treated us while we were sinners. He gave his best gift to us. And so if he loved us that much as sinners, how much more does he love us? And how much more does he give to us now that he calls us friend? Our lesson text ends by telling us that he saves us from future wrath because we are now his children. And again, I continue to talk about this because our salvation is not for us to boast. It is not because we're wonderful. It is only so that we can point back to God and talk about who he is and what he's done. And because of this justification, we now have reconciliation, which again is putting us back into right relationship with God. Here are my key learnings from the week. As wonderful as the idea of life with Christ forever is, God wants us to experience peace and enjoyable life right here, right now in the earth. The second thing is that justification is, it's not like a bubble bath. I mean, you don't like, you know, with a bubble bath, you uh, run your water, it's all nice and hot. You've got the bubbles. Uh, they look all pretty. My niece had a great time when she came to visit. And in the beginning, it's so much fun because there are bubbles. But after a while, you sit in the water and the bubbles sort of disappear and you're figuring out what you have to do to get the bubbles back. That's not what justification is. He justifies you and the work is complete. There is nothing else that you need to do. Next, when we face life's trials and difficulties, our outlook should be different from the world because of the peace of God that is in us and because we have peace with God and you cannot experience the peace of God until you have peace with God. Because we have been justified, we are in right relationship with God and we are to experience daily victories in Christ Jesus. Last, here was a formula that I came up with um, and it's straight from the scripture. Faith plus love plus hope equals patience for the believer. And you know, uh, there should be discussion in your class on patience. We talk about that. In fact, I made a post this week. I don't remember asking God for lessons in patience because when you ask for patience, you will have to be tested in those areas because there's no way to find out what's in the tea bag until you put it in hot water. So as patience is produced, it does. it's not produced just because we woke up in the morning, but as we go through life, as we work through every challenge, he is working that out in us. Here's my challenge for you for the week. And I've not challenged you before, but again, there is so much going on in the earth and so much negativity and so much emotion and hate being spewed. And I'm going to adopt a challenge from the friends that I'm actually with um, on this weekend. And we are operating by the kill them with kindness challenge. So this weekend, in fact, for the whole next, next week, I am challenging you, every person that you come in contact with, especially those who look like they don't want to be in contact with you, kill them with kindness. Show the love, the love of God. Because of the faith that we have, we experience God's love and we are to pour that out on others. So show love wherever you are. Um, if you're new, let me know that you're new. Leave us a comment if you learn um Anything in your study this week that you think would be helpful as we all continue to review and prepare for Sunday, leave some notes in the comments. I always love uh, reading, reading your feedback and getting your uh, nuggets as well from class. I think that's it. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in Sunday school. Bye-bye.